Chapter 12 Wind, Sand, and Time Central Asia can be a dangerous place to build. Structures often don't last. For centuries past, and even now, the prime building material has been mud brick. No matter how grand a structure's design or how exquisitely ornamented it may be, the deadly combination of wind, sand, and time will prove devastating to such materials. I guess that's the way it is with most things men build. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor in vain. This is a shame, for great labor goes into building. Sometimes a large measure of vanity is included as well. That may not always be the case, but self-importance can be quite an architect. Of course, only God knows who will build what, and only He will judge each one's work for what it is. Yet there is a good side to this mud-brick construction, for when these structures wear away, they always leave something behind. Dirt. And usually, the only thing required for this transformation is the passage of time. A man's hard work, his plans, and his sacrifice frequently return to their most basic element, awaiting someone else's vision to shape them. It is good that Central Asia is thus constituted, for it is full of the fallen structures that were once so important to a previous builder. Upon their ruin, these elements provide the raw materials for those who come later. I have a Central Asian friend who is well acquainted with wind-worn and ruined structures. In less than a decade of faith in Christ, Bakhar and his wife Gulia have been leaders in two churches that the winds blew into the dustbin of history. Both churches had been driven by the visions of courageous people, courageous foreign pilgrims to be exact. But each of them disintegrated because of those two words, foreign and pilgrim. The first church wore away mostly because it was foreign, foreign funded, with a foreign style of worship. It was foreign in its essential nature, with nothing indigenous about it, nor had there been any real attempt to make it so. Such was that pilgrim's vision. But all things foreign, even those things grand and wonderful, are especially vulnerable to the effects of wind and time. The lifestyle promoted by easy foreign money can wear away a local pastor's heart and harden his character. Problems that a monthly salary and an impressive building cannot overcome. The second church died, a most accurate description, precisely because it was the vision of a pilgrim. A kind and deeply committed pilgrim, to be sure, but a pilgrim nonetheless. As is the case with all pilgrims, the day came when he had to leave, and when he did, the little church he had built around his loving personality succumbed to the cruelty of the elements. It may be a short time, or it may be decades. It may even be in a coffin, but there always comes a day when the pilgrim goes home. And when this deeply committed pilgrim left, the church he had labored so hard to build simply died a natural death. Bakar and Gulia had given a piece of their hearts to these churches and therefore grieved over their demise. But still worse was the way their foreign leaders acted on the day when their work was tested. Even the best of pilgrims can turn harsh and accusing upon seeing their plans, hard work, and sacrifice returning to the dust from which it was drawn. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor in vain. Could it be that the vanity of building great structures is only exceeded by the arrogance displayed when they fall to ruin? Bruised and sore, Bakr and Gulia came close to packing up their dreams and heading back to the worldly ways of Central Asia. Only by the grace of God did they stand firm. A small flame still burned in their hearts, and that gave them the courage to build on their own. When they did, they discovered that their dreams and desires were a heavenly blueprint for something different. They realized that foreigners often need great buildings to sustain their visions. 
Bakr and Gulia decided to be content with humble houses to enclose theirs. Their foreign friends had drawn grand and elaborate designs, but simple sketches would be enough for them. With a clear sense of calling, they began to survey what was left. In both places where they had once worshipped, spiritual desert had again taken over. Where splendid foreign-looking structures had stood, they now found mounds of broken and eroded brick. Lives that had taken the brunt of the collapse of foreign constructions lay scattered in the debris. It did not seem that much was left lying around in these ruins, but with what little there was, Bakr and Gulia started rebuilding. The foreigners had built structures with logic they could understand, but local believers could not. For Bakr it came naturally to build with simple stories and prophet-like challenges that make most foreigners uncomfortable. Without stopping to think about it, the two of them set their hands to build by a different design. As they did, Bakr struggled with feeling incompetent as a builder, which was due partly to the fact that his mistakes were many. However, this was also caused by issues beyond his control. How could he have known that while we pilgrims enjoy receiving respect, we are sometimes unwilling to return the favor? Who would have guessed that the very act of picking up the pieces would be perceived as a threat to the status quo? At that particular moment in his life, it was essential for Bakr to sense that he had the respect of others if he was going to overcome his own fear and inexperience. He especially needed it from the many missionaries whom he admired. Unfortunately, it does not always work this way in the competitive business of building private kingdoms. In spite of it all, Bakr and Golia are slowly succeeding where others ultimately failed. They will never achieve renown as the builders of great buildings, but where the passage of time had brought back the desert of spiritual darkness, there are again small springs of hope. Where foreigners had built their grand structures, they have built and are continuing to build spiritual household after household small communities of faith in a corner of Central Asia. Perhaps the fierce combination of wind and time may someday erode their work as well. That is certainly possible, but I get the feeling that what Bakr and Golia are building will survive much better than the grand designs of pilgrims. For theirs are humble structures and unpretentious plans, which seem better suited to the ravages of Central Asia. For that reason, they may do more than simply survive. Perhaps they will even prosper. Again, only time will tell.